Let's admit it, it's fun to bend the rules from time to time. Knowing that we can get away with doing something we're not supposed to is an illicit and decadent thrill that permeates through most avenues of life and video games are no exception. It goes without saying that if players can find a way to bypass a whole area of a game or get away with slaughtering countless NPCs without any consequences, then you can bet your boots that's exactly what we're going to do. I mean, if the tools are there, why not use them? Throughout the years, dedicated players have often sought out new and inventive ways of outsmarting their favourite games. Players can and will search every nook and cranny for an easy way to bypass something or simply unearth a nifty little trick that makes the game a lot more fun. So with that, let's dive on in and look at some of the best ways that players have managed to outsmart their favourite games. Hopefully, you'll pick up a trick or two while we're at it. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 genius ways players outsmarted video games. Number 10. Sequence Breaking – Super Metroid Perhaps the earliest known example of players outsmarting video games came with the release of the highly anticipated and utterly fantastic Super Metroid. A groundbreaking title in every sense of the word, it greatly expanded upon the original's non-linear approach to gameplay and implemented many key features that would become series staples. Throughout the game, players must traverse an open-ended landscape and recover each of Samus's lost abilities in order to unlock new areas. For the most part, players follow a linear path, encountering particular enemy types, bosses and additional upgrades at predetermined intervals. Dedicated fans soon realise that there are ways to obtain Samus's power-ups far earlier than intended, meaning that large stretches of the map can be traversed in mere seconds, and boss encounters were far easier to deal with due to the increase of firepower and energy reserves. In some instances, entire sections of the game could be skipped, cutting down completion times by a substantial amount. The combined efforts of these early pioneers led to the rise of speedrunning, a practice that remains incredibly popular to this day. We can say without certainty that without Super Metroid, gaming culture wouldn't quite be the same. Number 9. Using Turbo Controllers Mario Party Series how many of us here can remember the aching wrists and calloused fingers we used to get when locked into a serious game of Mario Party with friends? The inescapable pain of smashing your hand against the controller in hopes of trouncing your friend at a minigame is an unforgettable one, and it's likely the reason you shudder every time you see an N64 controller. In several of Mario Party's minigames, players are required to frantically hammer buttons in certain orders or combinations in order to defeat their opponents. This frenetic and frankly tiring exercise was not good for your fingers, and was especially bad for your poor controllers. Imagine the delight of players when they realised that most third-party controllers included a turbo function, which would rapidly press any given button that was held down. In most games, the function is next to useless, but when it comes to games like Mario Party, it's the king of exploits. This nefarious tactic might have saved many a controller from wearing out, but one good deed may have been outweighed by sheer amount of friendships it ended in the process. Number 8. Skipping Boss Fights – Resident Evil Code Veronica Resident Evil Code Veronica is considered to be one of, if not, the hardest game in the series. This is down to its heavy reliance on tough boss encounters, increased amounts of on-screen enemies, and some genuinely infuriating game design that can force players into unwinnable states. You'll need to employ many different tactics to ensure your survival, with the conversation of ammo being your top priority. The easiest and most effective way of doing so is to choose your battles carefully. And as luck would have it, two of the late game bosses, the albinoid adult and the giant black widow, can be bypassed in seconds if you know what you're doing. Players that had mastered the tank controls realised that you can simply rush into the boss arena, grab the key item they're protecting, and leg it out the door. It's not essential to kill either of the bosses in question because all you get for your troubles is bragging rights and a load of wasted ammo. Code Veronica isn't the only game in the series where this is possible, but it's certainly the one where it's the most useful to do so. Number 7. Healing the Phantom Train Final Fantasy VI if you're a fan of JRPGs, then you really do owe it to yourself to play through Final Fantasy VI, or Final Fantasy III if you're from across the pond. It has aged beautifully and is every bit as captivating as other installments in the franchise. Whilst on your quest to stop Kefka, you'll come across the Phantom Forest, a luscious yet spooky landscape that houses the Phantom Train, a dungeon that must be conquered to allow you passage into the next area. At the final stretch, the train itself becomes a boss that you must fight while simultaneously running away. For a game that's nearly 20 years old, it's still an incredibly thrilling and tense encounter, or at least it 
would be if it wasn't for one small factor. The Phantom Train is classified as an undead creature, therefore meaning that your party's healing abilities can cause it damage. Players figured out that this actually went one step further and by using a phoenix down, you can kill it instantly. This nifty little exploit turns what should be a tense and thrilling battle into a mere bump on the road. Number 6. The Pause Trick – Mega Man it's no secret that the Mega Man series is home to some of gaming's most infuriatingly difficult boss battles. Even as far back as the original Dr. Wily's legion of maniacal machines are definitely responsible for many a broken NES controller. The one battle that no doubt caused the most rage quits per player is the Yellow Devil. Taking down this hulking behemoth is no easy feat. His base attacks alone pack a powerful punch, but it's his unique method of moving across the screen that's more likely to send you to an early grave. Throughout the battle, the Yellow Devil will begin to hurl parts of his body across the arena and slowly reform himself. It takes skillful dodges and perfect timing to avoid each of them, and attacking during this phase isn't advised. Players did discover a hidden exploit that renders this boss a cakewalk if done correctly. If you fire a shot then hit select just as the shot connects, you'll pause the game. If you've got the timing right, when you unpause the game, the shot will have done far greater damage than before. Repeat this several times and the fight is over in no time. Number 5 Murder Without Consequences Fallout 1 and 2 the wastelands of Fallout are a harsh place indeed, where murder and mayhem are the order of the day and nobody is safe from tyranny. So as you'd imagine, there's plenty of inventive ways for players to murder the masses, but alas, there be consequences for such awful actions. Murder happy players soon found that a useful method is to utilise super stimpaks. For the uninitiated, stimpaks are the Fallout world's equivalent of the first aid kit, or green herb, an all-purpose healing item that can be crafted by the player. You also have the option to create super stimpaks, a variant that provides greater healing but has adverse side effects, like inflicting damage after a certain time. These can be handy when you're in a bind, but players soon figured out that these items could be used for more harm than good. If there's a particular NPC that's given you grief but you don't want to get in trouble for their demise, just shoot them up with a couple of super stim packs. Give it a few minutes and hey presto, one dead civilian and all the loot you can steal. Best of all, no moral repercussions. Lovely stuff. Number 4 The Rainbow Road Shortcut Mario Kart 64 Rainbow Road. <sighs> Rainbow bloody road. Aside from the phrase incoming call, has any other two word combination caused so many anxiety attacks? For those of you not in the know, Rainbow Road is simultaneously the best and worst track that you can choose to play in the Mario Kart series. It's been present in every instalment since the very beginning and it's the one that truly separates the men from the boys. Rainbow Road asks a lot of the player, requiring immense precision and timing to master each corner and not fall off the edge into oblivion. But as many may have gathered, some sneaky tricksters managed to find a shortcut in Mario Kart 64's variant of the Day Glow Runway. At the start of the course, you'll be sent headfirst down a large slope. If you jump just at the right time and shift your weight to the left, you'll send your racer careening over the side of the road below and on your merry way to victory. Granted, this isn't a particularly easy exploit to take advantage of, and it's likely that on your first few attempts, you'll launch yourself off the track and miss the road entirely. So, drive carefully. Number 3. Bombing the Bed of Chaos – Dark Souls it's no secret that the late stages of the original Dark Souls are pretty lousy. They're riddled with poor design and underdeveloped ideas, but absolute worst has got to be the Bed of Chaos, a tedious and ultimately boring boss battle that players dread each time they start a new playthrough. Acting as more of a trial and error platforming challenge than an actual fight, players must destroy two orbs on each side of the room before entering the heart of the beast to stab it up for good and proper. All the while avoiding impossible to predict pit traps and large sweeping attacks that can easily throw you into said pit traps. The smarter cookies amongst the Dark Souls fandom figured out a way to bypass this battle in a mere 20 seconds. As it turns out, you can simply stand in the middle of the arena and throw black firebombs at both of the orbs, destroying them instantly. From there, you can charge right into the core of the being and vanquish it for good. This speedy little sequence break actually serves to improve your experience as the bed of chaos is often considered to be the lowest of the Dark Souls lows. Number 2 – A Great Use for Buckets The Elder Scrolls V – Skyrim 
We're always told to be a good citizen and obey the law, but when it comes to video games, it's far more fun to break the rules. This is especially true in the expansive RPGs that Bethesda spores us with. The worlds they present can often be harsh and uncaring, meaning every so often you'll need to pilfer some essential items to help you out of a tight spot. A highly amusing and incredibly useful trick that players discovered in early versions of Skyrim is that you could place a bucket on the head of a shopkeeper, which in turn would completely negate their line of sight, meaning that you could steal everything that wasn't nailed down and suffer none of the consequences. This would give players near unlimited access to all manner of trinkets, weapons and loot early in the game, significantly lessening the overall challenge. Sadly, this little exploit has since been patched out of the game, so if you're wanting a hassle-free crime spree, you'll have to do a whole lot of tinkering on your PC. If you don't mind going through all that hassle, then I say go forth and pillage, my friend. Number 1. Rocket Jumping – Quake Series ID Software's now iconic Quake series was one of the earliest pioneers of the online shooter, helping to formulate and refine many of the genre's core ideas and tropes. The most notable addition, however, was something that the developers hadn't counted on. Players soon discovered that if you were to jump in the air and fire a rocket launcher at the floor, you'd be flung upwards with such a velocity that you could bypass certain parts of the level in no time at all, effectively turning Quake into one big platformer. And just like that, rocket jumping came to be. This nifty little trick would cost you some HP, but for those who knew how to best conserve their supplies, this was a game changer, opening up the floodgates for speedrunning and turning the already fun multiplayer deathmatch modes into high intensity vertical skirmishes. Rocket jumping became such a widespread exploit that later games in the series adopted it entirely, making it a key mechanic in Quake's combat. The developers even went so far as to design subsequent levels with the mechanic in mind to challenge players who'd become accustomed to its use, and thus a legend was born. And those are our genius ways players outsmarted video games. What do you think of these? Leave us a comment down below and let us know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten from More Culture, and I will see you in the next video.